Hi everyone. So today I'm going to show you the new config tool, something I've been working on for a while. And it's pretty exciting because, you know, obviously the one that I built originally, I got it, it got the job done, but I always knew it could be better. And also I really wanted to be able to support Mac OS and Linux systems with pin one mini machine and pin one itself. Um, so that allows for this. So this, if you look, uh, I've got builds out there for Linux and Mac OS as well. So you should be able to operate the config tool within those operating systems and configure your pin one there, which is great. Uh, it also, of course, adds a lot of nice features since this is a kind of web-based tool. It's not web-based, but it's an electron app. So it's got all the nice little features that you'd have in most websites, which is like dark mode, light mode, ability to zoom in. So this is super handy if you've got a high res monitor. I know in the past it could be like impossible to read some of those fonts, but now that's no longer an issue because you can zoom in on the thing just by using shift control plus and then shift minus just the standard, standard keys to zoom in. Um, the newest models of the pin one boards, the ones with the USB-C port on them, uh, can also auto reset themselves. So when I click this button to do the firmware, it's going to be a lot more reliable. It'll actually send a command to reset the pin one and then it'll update the firmware and let it go. So any of the newer ones will be a lot easier. There is also the option to uh, do it with a manual reset. In that case, you would push the reset button on the pin one board, select the com board, and then click this button and that would update the firmware that way. Um, the other nice feature that comes out with this is the X input also has the ability, even after you install the X input, in, input firmware, you can hold down buttons three through nine. So that's basically all the buttons on the left side of the pin one mini machine. And that will reset the pin one mini machine, which then can allow you to update the firmware really easily. So you don't have to actually uh, get in there and push the reset button. You can do it through button presses. So the firmware is always looking for that and just makes things easier for installing the firmware if you're, if you're an X input user. Uh, but yeah, always, if you can use this firmware, it's going to work a little bit better as far as the configuration and everything, but X input still available in case you want to run it kind of like an Xbox controller and not have to worry about any configuration whatsoever. It just works right out the gate. So that's available. Uh, but yeah, when you first are presented the page, you basically just have two options. One is to do some firmware stuff and the other one is to just connect to the board. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. And once you're connected, you get the full suite of options for the different things that you can do. So in this case, uh, the home page now allows you to back up and restore settings. So if you happen to have settings that you want to back up or restore to your PC, you can do that. I did change the format of those settings from the XML format to a JSON format. So um, it's a little bit different format, which means if you backed up on the old config tool, it won't directly be able to be converted into here, although all the values are still there. So you could actually convert it if you needed to, but just recommend if you do upgrade to this config tool and you want to save your settings to go ahead and back these up to a PC before you get started on anything. Uh, the next thing is the accelerometer. So you can see in here again, uh, pretty straightforward. It's the same as the old config tool, um, except it's just maybe a little bit easier to work around with the sliders and such. You can, easily set your max X or your max Y to dial in kind of your sensitivity of the, of the accelerometer. So, you know, in the case of a cabinet where it might be pretty sensitive left and right nudging, because that's easy to nudge that way. And it's harder to nudge it forward and backward. You might have a setup that's, you know, kind of similar to something like this maybe. And then you can obviously your tilt, can also be adjusted in the same way. So now if I if I go ahead and, and move my accelerometer past that part there, then I'll end up tilting things. And again, dead zone is also a feature that you can utilize in here. And uh, maybe you just don't want things happening just right about there, just in case you know a small nudge happens due to moving moving a shaker motor or something like that. Uh, you can set that up. And then again, rest of these features are here. 
And you'll note that everything that I hover over has a nice kind of kind of goes into detail as to what each thing does. So before you had to go to the documentation, maybe to understand exactly what all these features did. Now you can see it right within the tool. So it makes things a little less confusing as far as, you know, what are you, what are you actually doing here? What are these different features for? And so you can just kind of go in the tool and, and look around and you'll learn just by, just by going through the tool itself. Input screen is again, more of the same that you can see the different button presses and what they do. You can turn on debounce for different ones. And uh, again, really nice feature is that since you can now make things smaller, I can see all the buttons all at once. Could be nice. You don't have to scroll around to see them. Um, not necessary, but still nice things to have when you're working in this more responsive design. Um, so that's inputs. I guess there's not a whole lot, a whole lot to talk about with inputs, but the next thing is the outputs and the screen has a lot going on, but it's essentially more of the same. If you want to turn on any of these outputs, you can. So I'll, I'll go ahead and turn this one on. You can see it turns on and yeah, it automatically got set down. It, you can see in here, I've got this uh, after two seconds, turn it to 31 and you can see now it's at 31. So I turn it up and then I can go ahead and turn it off and it'll turn that output off. On my end, I can actually see the red light turning on and off on my screen, but uh, you just have to trust me that it's working. <laughs> um, and so again, more of the same here. One other thing that's on here is you can kind of cycle through the outputs. This was on the old tool as well. This one actually cycles off and on if you see what's happening there. So uh, I noticed before it would just like turn it directly on, off, on, off. Now it actually turns it off and on, off and on, off and on. So just makes it a little bit easier to, to cycle through them all. And so that way, if you just want to test your solenoids and you don't want to like scroll up and down and click things and everything like that, you can just go and use the cell slider, just like choo -choo 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 -choo, test everything out. Like, okay, everything works or see if everything's going on that's wrong. It's just nice for debugging, I noticed. Um, so then on to plunger. And so plunger again, you know, pretty familiar screen here. You can kind of set your max and your min. It has the calibration routine. So if I do this, all it's really going to do is you're going to push your plunger forward as far as you can, pull it back, and then set it to where the resting position is and hit the finish calibration. That'll actually set all your values. And you can see when you hover over them, it kind of shows what they are, minute max position. And then what you'd want to do after that is go ahead and save the config once you have that set properly. And that'll save it in place. Again, you can adjust these really easily if you want to adjust the resting position or the max, then you can go ahead and do that. And sometimes it's nice to be able to just, you know, basically um, figure out what your max should be and then and then go from there. So next thing is settings. So we have our button triggers and night mode operations and some other settings. Uh, not much not much going on in here, just extra settings. But the main thing you'll probably use in here is the button triggers and the night mode. And then if you want to change your uh, your light show, then you can do that too. And then the last thing is Steam Config. So um, this is a great literal utility that we have available to us. So this will allow you to set up your all your button mapping for Steam. And then once you have that set up, you can save the steam configs and it defaults kind of to the most common way that you have things set up but you can set you can change the buttons if you'd like to you can see like up down left and right are set up for the shift keys um, and on the pin one mini machine i have them in a diamond pattern so up you know is the one that's up and left and right and down so it makes sense and uh if you set this up then you can use your pin one just like an Xbox controller in Steam games, and it works fairly well on almost all games. So you get your real analog nudge, you get your actual plunger going back and release and everything, as well as the standard button presses. And that's pretty much it. So you can see everything's here. 
and I'll probably continue adding some features to it, but I wanted to show it off because it is mostly complete. There's probably a little couple of little things that I missed here and there, which I'm sure we'll find, but it's easy to make changes to it. It's nice application for y'all to use. And I hope you found that useful. Uh, going forward, you know, I can't wait to see what, what new things I'm able to come out with. I do have a lot of new stuff coming in the pipeline too. So, you know, keep you, keep on subscribing cause I'll always have more new things to show off and, uh, love, uh, love pinball, love, uh, love all my good pinball fans out there and I'll talk to y'all later.